Welcome back. We still have with us Mr. Inge Etok, who is a pioneer chairman of Young Democratic Party. Now, you were talking about this category just before we yes, went on break. You yes. talked about category A being 30%. You say that these people are corrupt, maybe not helpable. 50%, uh, you say they're in amber. You know, they bend yes, things yes, sometimes, and yes. you know, but generally they are... Yes. A one in light, as it were. Yes. And then you have the 20% whom yeah. you say are incorruptible, in That's your right. opinion. Right. You know, nothing moves them. That's right. But this 50% in the middle, let's focus yes. a bit on yes. this in yes. your estimation. Yes. Don't you think that society is complicit in this? I mean, how can we then rise up and condemn what it is? I mean, we say corruption in the judiciary yes. when we haven't empowered our judges to do what it is that they need to do. You use the wrong word, society. You, society cannot empower them. They are civil servants, in a sense. It is the fact that if we want to fight corruption, there must be a very defined strategy, game plan, like a project, phases of application. I'll give you a very simple illustration. If today you stop corruption in the civil service, a minimum of 80% of civil servants will not be able to renew their rent on expiration. We have run a system where things are interwoven. You don't, you don't think that, that the system will self-correct itself? I mean, people it, have it, drawn it, examples it, to the fact that, for instance, in Abuja yes. now, in the wake of the recession, house yes. rents are dropping. Yes. And that, you know, the rents were only high, not yes. because the houses are that highly yes. valued, but yes. because people thought there was free money, and as such, people yes. could just put any amount of money in the houses. A time comes when the rent drops to one-third the price. That does not mean that you have that one-third the price to pay. You must realize that in the civil service, they are not expected to get ultimate means, alternate means of income. Okay? The judges are not expected to get alternate means of income. Somebody has to come and sit down and analyze what is a reasonable lifestyle of a judge after putting in so many years. Of, before, before you get to be a judge, you must have, for goodness sake, put in so many years of service to get and probably gone through the ranks. What is a reasonable you know, lifestyle earning and expectation of that person? Then we look at the extent to which government can meet that expectation. If it is practically impossible for government to meet that expectation, there has to be a discussion, an interaction as to what is possible and what is not possible. They have to be very defined parameters because this man must take care of his house. In must, defining yes. those parameters, I mean, considering what we have now, would yes. we say that we've done well by our No, judges? we have not done well. Number one, their, their pay is still very poor. Number two, their working environment is extremely harsh, okay? Number three, they are overloaded. Number four, there is too much social pressure on them. All these issues need to be brought to the table and discussed. So can we justifiably no. condemn these judges? I mean, Mr. Bakuba was talking about the court of public opinion and, you know, uh, the, the court where the, where the actual judgment takes place. And it would seem that in the court of public opinion, yes. these judges stand convicted yes. even before they've gone, you yes. know, before they've gone. So can, can we as a society, in all honesty and in yes. all good conscience, condemn yes. these judges before they've even been tried? Two things. The first is that um, I will not be in a hurry to cast a general aspersion on judges. On the other hand, if you as a judge, having an idea what your earning is, you are having as much as 50 million cash in your house. Two questions arise. Question number one is, how did you get the money? And question number two, why are you afraid to take it to the bank if it's an honest earning? Okay? So, and number three, why was your door broken down? You're a judge. By the time somebody is in your house, Likelihood is that he's going to say, we are here and talk to you. There must be an exchange. The second thing after the exchange is that you probably have the capacity to make calls, one, two, three, four. Number three, because you are a law officer, okay, being a judge, you have an idea of what is legal or not. I'm sure they must have said, we have a warrant, and you must have said, let's see the warrant, even if you opened a little part of your window just for them to show. Now, at that point, when you would have made one or two calls, you know that if you don't open the door, they'll break in and come in. So I think the likelihood is that if you are clear 
and your conscience is clear. You just look at your God and you open the door. Even when armed robbers come to your house and they say, open the door. Most of the time, people know that if you don't open that door and they break it down, they will deal with you first before going back. If you are civil enough to open the door, the likelihood is that they will deal with you with a lot more human um, disposition. Finally, I happen to be an architect. And something tells me by looking at the picture that that wasn't a front door. And I'm asking myself, if that wasn't a front door, is it possible that in their intelligence there's a certain room where something is being kept, and you're asked to open that room, and you probably say you will not open it, or you say that the key is missing, and they know they've got to get into that room. And would you really have a security door inside your house, within the house, depending on how you build the house? The bottom line is that at the end of the day, the door is brought down. Now, there are many things that I may not be happy with ordinarily. But we happen to be in a situation where an average Nigerian believes that these judges are destroying our democracy. They are getting too much monetized in judgment, especially concerning you know, um, uh, election petition cases. And, and we have completely... Look, one of the popular um, uh, politicians, I would not like to call name, he says, get judgment, then go to court. Why is he that get the result and now then go to court? Why is he so happy to let you go to court? Because he knows that once you have gotten the result and you are pronounced government, you are literally in charge of the system. So you are not afraid of the system. And that's not good for the common man. You should, whether you are in government or you are out of government, everybody should be afraid of the law. But there are questions as to the manner. I mean, you yes. have talked about, it seems you're trying to justify this, and yes. some people will have a problem with the yes. analogy in yes. terms of, you know, <laughs> yes. armed robbers coming to your house. Yes. DSS, yes. security agencies yes. must be, uh, you know, dignified in terms of how they carry out the operations. They must have been processes and procedures. They must have knocked on the door, I believe that, till the final results come. They must have said, we are um, SSS or DSS, there must have been interaction. They must have said we have an, a, a, a search warrant. They must have. I don't see a situation where they just bump into the compound, boom, and start breaking down things. I don't think that's possible. And I believe that they have a video recording, I believe that, where they, they are going to be able, because before they go for an operation like that, they know that they should expect anything, and they will have to defend themselves. So I think they are recording all the processes. So until that time comes, but I doubt that. DSS will step into a compound and just, boom, start breaking down the doors without communicating with anybody. I don't think that's possible. And thirdly, somebody has said you should have invited them. Good. But if in their investigations, which they said took a period of eight uh, months or thereabout, they must have realized that there's something somewhere. And that thing is not going to be gotten by inviting them. The registration is going to be gotten through getting a search warrant mm. and searching the house. Well, Mr. Inya Etok, I have to thank you so much for coming yeah. on Sunrise Daily. We thank you for your time. We've been speaking to Mr. Inya Etok, who is a pioneer uh, chairman of the Young Democratic Party. Sunrise Daily continues in just a moment. Do join us again.